All right, buenos dias, mis amigos. All right, so today I'm going to be critical of this video by Chick Tracks. And uh, the title of the video is, Who are the rest of the dead in Revelation 20? So let's go there real quickly. And I'm going to try to make my points fast and simple. Okay, so that it ought to be seen easily by anyone who believes the Bible they hold on their hands. Okay, so Revelation 20 verse 5, but the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Alright, so let's go and there's going to be three points in this video that I want to share so let's listen to the first one all right oh, we got this going on here um, there we go okay never mind now words rapture refers to the believers dead and living caught away to Christ without the aid of angels and being changed into his immortal heavenly okay so let's look at that again however it gets really confusing if we can't use common words to talk about these subjects so to make this easier to understand I will define some words rapture refers to the believers dead and living caught away to Christ without the aid of angels okay without the aid of angels okay so let's go to Matthew 24 okay Jesus is asked specifically by his disciples what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world it's not complicated at all. All right, so he tells us that when it is the end of the world, the sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall all see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. All right, now consider the parable of the wheat and the tares. Okay, in Matthew chapter 13. Let both grow together until the harvest, and in the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. And then he goes on to explain the parable a little bit here. Oops, that. Where am I at here? I. There it is. I went too far. Okay, the enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. So, let's go back. What did this David Daniel say here? Let's let's go over it again. To make this easier to understand, I will define some words. Rapture refers to the believers dead and living caught away to Christ without the aid of angels and being Okay, so that's 
not supported by one verse in the Bible anywhere. It's not supported by scripture at all. Alright. It, it's not in the Bible, David. At all. Alright. Let's see. Go to um, <clears throat> 1 Thessalonians 4. This idea that we are gathered together without the aid of angels is completely contrary to the Word of God. Alright? For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. Matthew 24. And he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet. All right, it's the same thing. Okay, let's go to 1 Corinthians 15. I believe that's what he's... Yeah, right there. Go to 1 Corinthians 15. And behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound. What happens when the trumpet shall sound? Then shall the angels, angels gather together the elect. Great sound of a trumpet. He shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet. This, there's not, I mean, come on, man. You can't connect the dots? Is it really that complicated? Well, when you take a, uh, when you take a, you know, uh, this um, doctrine or whatever that is foreign to the Bible, then you have to start dividing the Bible separate from the doctrine. Okay, so. You, so now you got this doctrine that's foreign to the Bible, so you got to say, well, Matthew 24 is not part of this doctrine. Matthew 13 is not part of the doctrine. And then um, Matthew, uh, or I'm sorry, 1 Thessalonians 4 with the voice of the archangel. So wait a second. As it says in First Thessalonians, without the aid of angels. I just noticed that here, right? This is First Thessalonians 4. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the shout, with the voice of the archangel, without the assistance of angels. So that, that right there is wrong. I mean, wrong, wrong. You can't even... Yeah, that's just lying. Without the aid of angels. With the shout, with the voice of the archangel. But, I mean, come on, man. You don't, you forgot that word was there? That destroys your entire theology or whatever. <laughs> your doctrine is destroyed. Now you have to say the Bible's wrong. With the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. And we see here in Matthew 24, with the great sound of a trumpet, the angel shall gather together his elect. Okay. And then so also um, in um, 1 Corinthians 15, the last trump, the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised. And this is not rocket science, man. All you have to do is put the piece, this connect the dots that's it it's not complicated okay so that's enough of that uh, when you start off 
your video wrong <laughs> your whole video is wrong alright so let's go to point number two 723 723 let's see what he says here and it says this is the first resurrection let that sink in yeah I'm letting it sink in pal the first resurrection is only the beheaded witnesses who will rule and reign alright so in other words zombies are gonna rule and reign they're not gonna have a head alright they're gonna be headless zombies ruling and reigning for a thousand years okay that's not in the Bible anywhere it's not in Revelation 20 it's not anywhere at all that idea is completely foreign to the scripture it's completely foreign to common sense completely foreign to reality all right you've been reading too many comic books and watching too many Hollywood movies okay this idea that headless zombies people with no head ruling and reigning that's ridiculous that usually means they will rule and reign over someone without subjects you're not a king Ooh, yeah without subjects you're not a king without subjects you're not a king. Without subjects, you're not a king. What do we read in Revelation 1? Verse 6. Let's start at verse 5. Huh? Maybe that'll kill two birds with one stone, right? And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first resurrection I mean it could not be clearer from Jesus Christ who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and has made us kings and priests unto God and his Father to him be glory and dominion forever and ever amen forever we are kings and priests unto God That's from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the first begotten of the dead, the first resurrection. And what do he say? Well, without subjects, you are not a king. Well, we are kings. We could have a big discussion about who our subjects are. Uh, but to put it real simply, we are called to be fishers of men all right see rather than looking at things from the physical try seeing things from the spiritual the physical aspects of this life is going to go away it's going to be done with it's going to be finished it's going to be over but the spiritual things of god endure forever all right so one more point is it really that complicated? I, I, I don't, I don't know. It seems pretty simple to me. It really does, but then again, we live in a world where most people that profess to be Christians don't actually believe the Bible they hold in their hands. Out of olives. It's like a phenomenon, really. 
shall cleave in the midst thereof. And of course, if you don't believe the Bible you hold in your hands, how can you expect to understand what the Bible says that you hold in your hands? East and toward the west, and there shall be a very great valley, and half of the mountain shall remove toward the north, and half of it toward the south. Then Jesus will have his angels physically gather the Jews that are still alive by his grace to Jerusalem. There it is. Alright, so Jesus is going to send his angels to gather all the dark-haired, big-nosed people. And, but not the, the what, the, who's not going to get, Jesus is going to, so Jesus is not going to use the angels for the rapture. So here in Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21. Uh, at the end of the world, the well, so the elect can't be those that believe in Jesus Christ, it's got to be those who say they are Jews. They have the dark hair and a big nose. Right? I mean, isn't that what... You... So, Jesus essentially died for no reason. And those people don't even have to believe in Jesus. Right? They... They're just saved just simply for being born of the flesh. So Jesus is lying. Right? In John chapter 3, when he says, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born. Again, so Jesus must be lying. If all you have to do is be is just to be born of the flesh, when he says, except a man be born again, and except a man be born of water and of the spirit and then clearly making a distinction between the flesh and the spirit a man born of the water is being born from his mother's womb and a man born of the spirit is born from the spirit of God which is above it's clear as all can be all right so Jesus is clearly saying ye must be born again of the spirit which is above and then here comes people who are now saying or they've been saying okay this is not new this is not David's idea he got that from somebody else but they're saying that well there's a special group of people who were born of a particular bloodline right born of a particular bloodline who will be saved simply because they are of that bloodline right because they are of the seed of Abraham right because they have this special lineage that goes directly back to Abraham just a direct bloodline even though God has made all nations of one blood these people have a special so it's kind of like two bloodlines 
Eh, no? Eh? I don't know. Okay. In, <laughs> I mean, come on, man. In Galatians 6, uh, 3, excuse me, verse 16. Now to Abraham and his seed where the promise was made. Well, there it is. These guys, they got a special, unique bloodline. They, it doesn't even matter what Jesus did. They don't need Jesus. They just need Abraham's blood. What if you take that blood and then you get a blood fusion? Then you don't need Jesus, right? So that now we've got all kinds of different ways to get saved. Right? Is that, is that the doctrine? Uh, whatever it is that you guys believe, just be honest about it and talk about it. You know, point specifically to the verses in the Bible that you believe are wrong. Now to Abraham and his seed where the promise was made, he saith not into seeds as of many, but as of one. And to thy seed, which is Christ. You get that? So the bloodline doesn't matter. Because the seed is Christ. Not this imaginary bloodline. He saith not into seeds as of many but one which is Christ and if you be Christ then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise is that really that hard to understand well, it really is if you want so desperately to believe that these people who re full on reject the Lord Jesus Christ are the chosen of God. If you believe that, then it, you're going to struggle and you're not going to be able to see the plain scripture written from Old Testament to the New Testament, the whole thing. You will not see it. And that's uh, really, that's a, the amazing thing about the Word of God is that without faith, you cannot understand it. You know, you think about, let's go to, uh, you think about, uh, oh, the parables that Jesus gave. He gave so many parables. And uh, this was meant for those of us that believe. Right? I'm not sure I'm going to be able to find. Oh, wait a second. What am I doing here? So, anyways. Unto them. Oh, no, 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 no. I speak to them variables because they seeing, see not, and hearing they hear not, neither. Do they understand? So the parables are are spoken in such a way that only those with eyes can see what they mean. So if they don't have faith, if you don't have faith, you're not going to be able to see it. Very plainly. Even unto this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. All right, and this is supported all throughout the Bible. Make this people's heart fat, both in Old Testament and New Testament. All right, make the heart of this people fat, and make their ears heavy, and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and convert and be healed. Okay? So if you do not believe what the Bible says, you're not going to understand what it says. All right, and then the last thing here, I mean, th this is just ridiculous. I, I, I don't know how people miss this. Okay, but then 
let's move on to the last thing real quick here and that is Jerusalem you think it's over there in the dirty Middle East really that's what you thought well that's contrary to the Bible here we are not even 10 minutes into this video and three strikes and you're out partner three strikes and you're out All right, and this is strike three Jerusalem where is Jerusalem is it right over there in between the blah 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 it's up in the air Jerusalem which is above is free which is the mother of us all Jerusalem the holy city of God is above now we could have figured that out by believing what the Bible says or by believing what Jesus says right let not your heart be troubled you believe in God believe also in me in my father's house are many mansions is he talking about the Middle East no he, you know he's not if it were not so I would have told you I go to prepare a place for you where's he going to the Middle East is that where he went no you know where he went and if I go and prepare a place for you I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am there ye may be also and whither I go you know in the way ye know ye know you know you should know this and then of course when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven we will John told us we will see the holy city new Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven Jerusalem is above Jerusalem is free okay here let's go back to that verse Jerusalem which is above is free and the mother of us all right it's not in the Middle East it's up in heaven and this is where we put our hope into this is where our heart is where your heart is or where your treasure is or something or another for where your treasure is there will be your heart also okay so is your heart over there in the dirty Middle East or is it in heaven where the city where the true city of God is of course it's in heaven for those of us that are born of God and again let's go back to Abraham's seed and I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel his heel I will put enmity, enmity between thee and the woman and thou shalt bruise his heel think about it that's Jesus coming in the clouds of heaven stomping his foot on the head of the serpent destroying evil forever and ever Revelation 20 and they went up on the breath of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about the camp of the saints about is up in heaven Jerusalem it's above so when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven we are lifted up to meet the Lord in the air and our enemy is gathered at our feet and fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours them this is from Genesis to Revelation all right and then uh, I feel like I'm going just a couple steps further here but in Second uh, Peter chapter 3 you know 
that the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. All right? When Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, it is the end of the world. The end of this world. Alright? So you don't have to worry about headless zombies. You know, this idea that you got to be born a special bloodline. We are all of one blood. Alright? And there is no rapture without the aid of angels what are you out of your mind David come on man <laughs>